Good morning, and welcome to St. Juliana Falconeri Parish. We especially welcome all visitors to our parish and those joining us online. Today, Father Mike will lead us in this celebration of God's love for us on this third Sunday in Advent. You will find the reading on page 890 of your Journey Song Hymnal. Please take a moment to stand and greet those around you. Please join us singing our gathering song, From the Depths I Cry to Thee, page 357, 357. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We've gathered together to celebrate God's love for each of us. Let us remember the way that we've received and extended that love to others, keeping God's commandments and give thanks. For the times we've broken the commandments of love of God and care for neighbor, we ask pardon, strength, and courage. Kyrie eleison God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for our sin, Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we, who are bowed down by our own conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods before me. You shall not carve idols for yourself in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's weaknesses on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down on the thousandth generation, on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep, the ho keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work shall be done then either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover, covet your neighbor's wife nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass or anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sweeter also than serum, 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. You might think that you hear the readings of the Ten Commandments with some frequency in our church. But you know, the Sunday readings are in a three-year cycle, the others on two years. This is the only Sunday when the Ten Commandments are proclaimed. That's Exodus chapter 20. The Ten Commandments. Let's say that there are really two separate blocks of ten. The first three and then the last seven. The first three really set the tone for the last seven, for it sets a tone of who is God, and how do we deal with this God? What do we make of this God? We're told that God must be the center of our life. You can only have one center. You can't put a center here and then somewhere else as well. The same thing's true with priority, by the way. You can't have a fistful of priorities. There's one priority. That's what the word means. 
And so let's make, first of all, God the center of our life. Without that center, nothing else holds, because God is the supreme being. God is that being of which no other being can be greater. You can't ask the question, well, if God is holding up the whole world, who holds up God? God holds up God. That's who holds up God. And if you don't understand it, it's a mystery. So learn it anyway. There can only be one highest point, and God is the highest point. There can be no higher than the highest. It's the way language works, logic as well. And then keep God holy at all times. And keep the day of the Lord holy at all times. Seven days you've got to, to work with. And at least one of them has to be different from the other six. So keep the Sabbath day. Come to Mass and do something special to celebrate the center of your life. God first, and then family, perhaps. That's the way it was when I was growing up. We went to Mass in the morning. Mind you, the Sunday gravy was already cooking on the stove, but we went to Mass and then enjoyed the rest of the day as a family would enjoy the rest of the day. Keep it special. Make sure that you're worshiping God and nothing else, and no one else. It's God that we set aside in the first three commandments. And how would anyone know that you really worship God? Did you bother to maybe do something special in your office to say, I'm a Christian? Something in the house, there's a crucifix or something that says, Christians live here. And then by your action, would someone really know that you're a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, that he's the one who leads us, he's the one who forgives our sins, he's the one that we worship, no one and nothing else. Why? The center of our life. Why? The highest. Why? There is nothing greater than God. The first three are taken care of. Let's sort of skip around for the others. Don't kill. It's really don't commit murder. We know that there are times when killing is justified. A just war and protection, of course. But don't commit murder. Killing would be a whole lot easier than some things that we do with people. We tell them that we don't want them. We're estranged from them. We hate them. We can't stand them. Get out of here! And that's killing. That's setting distance apart from one another. Remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man? Lazarus, that poor man, and the rich man. It's not that the rich man did anything wrong. He just didn't do anything at all. He kept a distance between himself and the one who was in need. He really killed that man in some ways, refused to feed him, wouldn't do anything good for him, wasn't kind in the least. That's setting some separation. Remember, sin separates and grace unifies. We pray for unity and peace. Forgive us our sins, the time when we were separate. Pray for the time when we're together. Murder is a whole lot easier than carrying on a relationship of hatred and separation from one another. Notice that sex is number six. We might think, hey, this church is all hung up on sex. Everything it has to do with sex all the time. It's number six on the list, people, but it's an important one. And then stealing. Stealing would be easy as well, too, just to take someone else's stuff. But what about stealing their intellectual property? What about stealing their personality? What about taking away something that's really theirs? It has to do with lying as well, making fools of someone else or saying things about someone else that you'd rather not know. It's the sin of detraction. I know something about someone else that needs to be kept quiet. Don't run around spreading rumors. Don't run around spreading anything that's going to make that other person look in a bad way when it's not necessary. And then taking possessions of other things, stealing or simply wanting what someone else has 
that bit about covet. A certain amount of coveting is necessary for a capitalistic society. You know, you've got to sort of create, well, I would like one of those or one of those or seven of the other things, and I really want it, and so I'm going to go out to the store and buy it. But is it necessary? Will it really change my life if I had these things or not? How, how important is this compared to the importance of God? How important is that compared to the importance of being a person of integrity? What is it that I really need so that I could be an honest and true Christian? In the end, we find that there are really only two commandments, to love God and to be kind. Be kind to whomever you encounter. You see, these commandments were really written so that we could all get along in a tribe. And God making them so didn't make them so. They were necessary to start with, not to steal, not to kill, to tell the truth. All of that's necessary to be a good human being. Remember, the easiest definition of being moral is simply being a good human being. What is it that we have to do to get along as a group of people? A tribe, a neighborhood, a community called church. And because God said so, didn't make them so. They were that way, and God made them that way. Remember to keep God holy and be kind to one another. Two commandments are necessary. A comment about the gospel reading in the temple. That temple was actually the temple of Herod. It was the second temple. The first, Solomon's temple, was destroyed, and Herod's temple was built and being built. And it was a temple, perhaps, of as many as 37 acres. To put it in perspective, Christ Cathedral is 34 acres. This temple, in the way it was arranged, could hold a bit more than 100,000 people. It's an awful lot that come to worship. They had zeal for the house of God. That's an important idea, too. Do we have zeal for our own community church? It's really a cute church. It sets here in the community. And do we stop often enough to say that I believe in God and I'm going to stop and make a visit? The automatic front doors of the church are open from before 6 o'clock in the morning to about 8.30 at night. And you stop by and make a visit, as we used to call it. This Tuesday is the first Tuesday of the month. The Blessed Sacrament is exposed on the altar from after the 6.30 a.m. Mass until 8 o'clock p.m. I know that Lent is a time for fasting. Do you drive quickly past the church, or can you stop in and make a prayer to Jesus? Can you stop in and pray for the things that you need to worship God? Can you stop and have time for God, in the house of God. What is it that Jesus is upset about? It became a, a place of commerce. There were certain necessities, of course. The money changers, for example. You could only use the money of the Jews in the temple. And so you had to change Roman coins and Roman money and any other money for the Jewish money. That's the story of the um, money changers. And then all that commerce that went on. Well, of course, if a dove outside the temple costs $2, why not charge $10 inside the couple? They were gouging, and it wasn't good. And that made Jesus angry. Doesn't it make all of us just a little bit better when we stop and worship God? Come to the church. It's a cute little building. Come to the church and find in it the Lord. Come to the church and find in it his community. Come to the church, most importantly, be led by the Savior to a new and better way of life. There are two things that are important, to worship God and to be kind. God bless. Our parish is blessed to have Two men entering the faith with the sacraments of initiation. They're the elect of the parish. And we also have a number of people seeking confirmation as well. Today we bring up our elect, Josh and Landon.
Will you please come forward with your godparents? And elect, we ask you to kneel here at the first step. And will the congregation also please kneel with the elect in silence at this time? Let the congregation be seated, the elect rise, and let us all pray. For these elect, for whom the church is confidently chosen, may they successfully complete their preparation so that at the Paschal Feast they will find Christ in his holy sacrament. That these elect may ponder the word of God in their hearts and savor its meaning more fully day by day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may learn to know Christ, who came to save what was lost. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit, who searches every heart, may help them to overcome their weakness through his power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who come to this holy place, that especially during the season of Lent, they will ponder the law of God and return to him with hearts made pure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the Masses this Sunday, for the parishioners of St. Juliana Parish and Catholic Grammar School, for the repose of the souls of Isaias Amporo Bernal, John Francis Bernard, Rita Semple, and the health and well-being of Jacqueline Alvarez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of power, you sent your son Jesus to be our Savior. Grant that these, our catechumens, thirst for living water, may turn to the Lord as they hear his word and acknowledge any sins and weaknesses that weigh them down. Protect them from the vain reliance on self and defend them from the power of Satan. Free them from the spirit of deceit, so that, admitting any wrong they have done, they may attain purity of heart and advance on the way to salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, in your merciful wisdom, you touch the heart of sinful people, and you teach us to worship God as Father in spirit and truth. Now, by your power, free these our elect from the cunning of Satan as they draw near to the fountain of life-giving water. Touch their hearts that the power of the Holy Spirit may come that through the power of the Holy Spirit they may come to know the Father in true faith and express it in selfless giving. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Our dear elect, now go in peace, coming back to join us again for the next scrutiny. May the Lord remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
join in singing our offertory hymn. Oh God, you search me. Number 678 in your hymnal, 678. table is ready now. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. O God, author of every, excuse me, excuse me, be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive one another. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God. 
For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that, freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and every saint, we praise you as without end we acclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his brother bishops, and all who minister in your name. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your great mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Juliana and Peregrine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and using the words that Jesus taught us, together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us have each other to sign in peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those not gathered with us today, we offer this spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Join in singing our communion hymn. There is a longing. Number six, four, five in your hymn. No, six, four, five.
join in singing our Ave Regina Chalum, found on the inside back cover of your hymnal. Ave Regina Come to our weekly Lenten retreat, which continues on Monday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. in the Parish Center. Arrive a bit before 7 p.m. for hospitality. The program itself begins at 7 and ends at 8.30. The series is live streamed. Try to arrange carpool so that more can attend in person. Stations of the Cross are prayed at St. Juliana on Mondays, beginning at 6.15 p.m., here in the parish church. The fish, fish fry continues on the Fridays of Lent. Operation Rice Bowl money collection bowls arrived just last week. They are now in the rear of the church for anyone who would like to participate in feeding the hungry. Rice bowl collection bowls are in the rear of the church. There are no deanery penance services this week, but next week on Wednesday, March 13th, the penance service will be held at St. Anthony Claret Parish in Anaheim, directly down Acacia at La Palma. And on Thursday, March 14th, at St. Justin Martyr Church in Anaheim, they begin at 7 p.m. There is no service, just confessions. St. Juliana celebrates exposition of the Blessed Sacrament this Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the month. The Blessed Sacrament will be exposed on the altar from after the 6.30 a.m. Mass until 8 o'clock p.m. Come and pray with the Lord. Express your zeal for the Lord on Tuesday until 8 p.m. You can do it long after that, too, but just in the church at, at 8 p.m. Ha, ha, ha. Coffee and donuts are served in the parish center immediately following the Mass. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our final hymn, Save Your People, number 364 in your hymnal. 364.